Summit Lake here was formerly a military reservation. Prior to non-native peoples inhabiting this land, Paiute people used to be fairly nomadic. We would travel where the food, where the game, where the seasons to collect medicine and plants were appropriate. The Lahontan cutthroat trout uh, were a major component of native peoples in the Great Basin for their diet. I have very fond memories as a child where there would be groups of 20, 30 of us here all fishing together and it was a real happy time. And when we captured the fish, we'd all pitch in and clean them. Here I'm a descendant of the Summit Lake Paiute tribe and in our native tongue it translates to trout eaters. And so the trout here are extremely important for our cultural identity. My name is William Cowan. I'm the Natural Resource Department Director for the Summer Lake Paiute Tribe. I'm also a fisheries biologist for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. After the Ice Age, there was a large inland lake east of the Sierra Mountains in the Great Basin, and that was known as Lake Lahontan. And the Lahontan cutthroat trout evolved in this inland sea into a large size. Many people don't realize that the Lahontan cutthroat trout were the only native trout species in Lake Lahontan in the Great Basin. Lahontan cutthroat trout were traditionally found throughout a large part of the Great Basin. And in the last couple hundred years, their populations have been reduced to few streams and lake systems. Currently, under the federal government designation, they're listed as a threatened species. Lake populations have declined by about 99%, so they're only found in, in about 1% of the habitat that they used to be found in. And stream populations, um, in terms of habitat, have declined by about 90%. What's special about this population is it's one of only two native self-sustaining lake populations of Lahontan cutthroat trout, meaning that they're not um, hatchery maintained, that the population here sustains itself without any um, you know, artificial or man-made inputs. Some of the questions that we're trying to answer here is where the population is at right now, where is it potentially heading in the future. We think there are stream resident fish in the stream, so we're also interested in where they're distributing themselves. Is there a lot of overlap? Are they using separate parts of the stream? And are they acting more as like one integrated population or maybe more as two um, subpopulations? Summit Lake is very unique in that it's a terminal lake which means the stream flows in, but it doesn't flow out. So all the water coming in stays in the lake. And it's also very unique in that it doesn't have any dams. So the fish are allowed to have free flowing access up into the stream. This lake's geographic location is quite remote. And as a result, this lake is relatively productive, filled with food resources to produce uh, large, girthy and, and, and fat fishes. And so the system is relatively intact from the upper watershed all the way down into the lower watershed producing large fishes. Team members from Summit Lake Paiute Tribe and the University of Nevada Reno have been working for a couple years now tagging fish uh, out in the lake. And so pit tags are just a small kind of pill-shaped tag that provide an individual identification for each fish. The tagging, the reason that's important is because we're able to track an individual fish through time. And the reason that's important is we can get information like, is the fish spawning every year? How long did it survive? So it gives us the story of each individual fish, which we wouldn't have if we didn't have an individual identification. Lahontan cutthroat trout can either live in stream ecosystems or lake ecosystems. And the lake ecosystem type of fish need to utilize streams in order for their rearing and spawning time. So typically what happens is adults are living within the lake environment, and then after a few years of age, they'll migrate into the stream or river environment, and then spawn and mate, 
the fishes within the streams might rear themselves there and then flush back into the lake ecosystem until they're adults again. It's important to know how many fish are in the lake because it gives the tribe here an idea of how they need to manage the lake in the future because if the population is low, um, then they may need to take certain steps to make sure they increase the population or if it's healthy, what they can do to maintain that healthy population. So it informs how they manage the system in the future. Pre-1970s, 1980s, the primary threat was the impact livestock had on the streams and on the lake. They tended to congregate near waters, and so that meant that they were grazing and staying most of the time near the stream. The stream became very wide and shallow, and more importantly, there was no shade to cover the stream. So the water temperature was really warm to protect and correct some of the impacts. We have constructed grazing exclosures to prevent cows and wild horses from accessing the riparian area. So right now we're looking at some really interesting equipment in the stream. Um, the stream is flowing this way down to the lake, which is down there. And so when the fish from the lake swim upstream on their spawning migration. First they're going to pass this. This is our in-stream pit tag reader. So any pit tagged fish is going to be detected with this reader. The next uh, feature here is the underwater video camera that Fish Bio designed with some of our input because the deployment and need here is so unique in a small stream system. And the focus here initially was so we can evaluate this technology to hopefully allow us to understand how many young juvenile fish are recruiting into the lake population. We're still learning about this technology and so we're using it right now to film adult spawners as they move through. And then the uppermost uh, feature is the Baki scanner system. And we have uh, a series of pipes here that serve as barriers to direct all the fish to go through this rectangular uh, box here, where on each side are light panels that emit infrared light. And as fish swim through, there's a silhouette of their image. The primary data that we have collected through the years has been the abundance of the fish run. And the site that we were making our counts is known as the Mahogany Creek Fish Trap. It's located about two miles upstream from Mahogany Creek inflow into the lake. What that allows us to do is actually count the number of spawning adults that are making their way um, up the stream. And also after they spawn, it allows us to count them as they make their way back down out to the lake. At the time it was constructed, it was believed there was no spawning activity occurring below that trap. Since we have implemented conservation to protect and restore the lower stream reach, there are lots of gravels and lots of spawning habitat that wasn't here 30, 40 years ago. And the fish are using that habitat to spawn. We are looking into ultimately developing a management tool, a model, where we can use information such as water flow, the weather, the snowpack up in the mountains to forecast how much water we may have in the forthcoming year. So we can answer and address some of these more broader scale questions on how not only to conserve cutthroat, but truly the biodiversity of what is um, comprising the natural species assemblage here. Hopefully, all the information that we collect here will be relevant and important for restoration efforts in other parts of, of Nevada. My hope is that this will be a place that's protected for the long term for all of uh, humanity to appreciate. I mean, this is a special place and it's being well looked after uh, thanks to the Summit Lake Paiute Tribe. And so I would just hope that uh, that good stewardship continues and that people appreciate what, what's here. I think just for tribal members, I really 
just want them to be able to experience this resource that's so special and just be able to be a part of everything that we're doing out here. And if they're interested, I you know, would love to learn from them and to just have them be out here and experience the beauty that is Summit Lake and this amazing resource that they have. My hopes are that we can continue to manage and preserve the environment here to sustain the biodiversity that uh, we currently enjoy and um, to prevent the extinction, the loss of species. I would ultimately like to pass down to our tribal members how unique of a resource this is, that uh, the fishery that we have here, we're blessed by the Creator to have the resources that are here and the fish are so important. They don't exist anywhere else in the world. I would like to pass on to our future members to be uh, stewards and to take care of this resource because truly this is our tribe as well. So I'd like to uh, continue to live my days here and uh, hope that our tribe will continue to enjoy this as well.